Good evening, everyone. It is that time again. Amen, amen. Time for Wednesday night Bible yes, study. Yes, yes. And for those of you who may be tuning in for the first time, and even those that have tuned in before, let me reintroduce ourselves to you. I am Reverend Dr. G. Rodney King, amen. and I'm here with my lovely wife, Janet King. Amen. And we will be your Bible study instructors. Make sure you have your Bibles now, because this is Bible study. So we're going to be going to several different scriptures tonight. Let me say, as I always say, please, ma'am, please, sir, get your vaccinations. Get your boosters. And your boosters. Now, we were just discussing before we came on, there are still people, believe it or not, there are still people that are dying from this virus, mainly because they are refusing to get the vaccine. It's been reported that over 95% of the people that are being hospitalized are those who are refusing to get the vaccine. Thank God that the numbers are going down Thank you, Jesus. and people are recovering, but still the fact of the matter is there are still people who are being hospitalized. There are still people who are dying from this COVID-19 simply because they refuse to get the vaccine. So please, if you know someone, family member, friend, even enemy, okay, if you know that they have not gotten their vaccine, speak on it. Talk about it. Encourage. Encourage people to get this vaccine. Mm -hmm. It is safe. There's no adverse effects from it. It is effective. And most of all, it is free. So please, talk it up. Tell people to get their vaccine. We want to stop the spread of this virus and eventually eradicate ourselves from this virus. So there is no need at this point in time for anybody to be dying from this COVID-19. Save your own life. Save your own life. Yes. There are people who are taking care of other people who have gotten their vaccines, but they refuse and they die. Mm -hmm. We just got through discussing that. So please, I don't know why these people are refusing, why they're hesitant, they're reluctant, even rebellious about getting this vaccine. We got our boosters. So we've had three shots. Same we even got our boosters. Because I normally don't get the flu vaccine, but this thing is deadly. Over 600,000 people, that's not a joke. That is actual people who have died. So I'm going to say it one more time. Please, ma'am, please, sir, if you haven't, or you know someone who hasn't, please tell them to get this vaccine. Amen. All right, enough of that. Are you ready for the word? Yes. All right. Last week, we talked about the, uh, we're talking about Faith's photo album. Mm -hmm. All right. And we're taking snapshots, just like how, when we went on vacation and we had special occasions and we took photos of those occasions and we can go back and look at it and remember how things were and what we did and all that. We're taking a Faith's photo album. Mm -hmm. We're taking snapshots of the different kinds or types of faith. Mm -hmm. And so far we talked about little faith and we talked about uh, the centurion's great faith. We talked about the Gentile woman who had great faith in asking Jesus to heal her daughter. Mm -hmm. And last week we talked about another example of great faith. But you know in my studies I went back and I found that there was a lot more information that I really needed to cover that I kind of want to go back and read, uh, address it again. Amen. So I asked you last week to turn to Luke chapter 8. This week, I want you to turn to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. We're going to find almost the same story 
But there's a little bit more information there because, see, Mark just wrote to Gentiles. He made it just plain for Gentiles to understand. And so I want to dwell in that, what Mark said, and I want to bring out a few more points that would probably be important to all of us. Mm -hmm. So if you don't mind, we're going to go to Mark chapter 5, and we're going to start at the 21st verse, all right? Again, one more time, Mark chapter 5, verse 21. And it reads, Now when Jesus had crossed over again, now notice that, he crossed over again. We read several times before that he crossed the Sea of Galilee, and what he actually did was crisscross. All right? He would go from this side to that side to this side to another side. He was going from town and village, healing and preaching the word of God. Mm -hmm. So he was always crisscrossing the Sea of Galilee. So now we find out that Jesus crossed over again by boat to the other side. And as he did this, look what it says, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And when Jesus had recrossed in the boat to the other side, a great throng gathered around about him, and he was at the lake shore. So he, as he crossed over, you had all these people that were waiting for him. Word had gotten spread around about his miracles and everything. So you had all these people who had gathered around not only to be healed, but to hear him preaching. Amen? So verse 22 says, And behold, and behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And 23 said, And begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed, and she will live. Read those, Janet. Then one of the rulers of the synagogue came up, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he prostrated himself at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be healed and live. Now, listen. He's a ruler of the synagogue, and there were several types of rulers or directors of the synagogues. He's at this one particular place. His job was to take the book, the Torah, and appoint somebody to read from different sections of the book. And so, as a ruler of the synagogue, he hears about Jesus. Now, he's Jewish now, all right? He hears about Jesus, and so he comes to Jesus, and he says, now, either his daughter was at the point of death, or he had realized that as he left, by the time he got to Jesus, his daughter may have already died. But at the bottom line is, she's at the very throngs of the doorsteps of death. Yes. And so now he comes to Jesus, beseeching him. And there are, there are several things that I want to bring out in your application of prayer to God. And I want you to pay attention to these four things. These four things are required. And this ruler, this man, teaches us what those four things are. First of all, a man should place himself in the presence of God. Mm. The word says he came to Jesus. How does that apply to us? We've got to approach God. We've got to come to the presence. The Bible tells us to come boldly yes. to the throne of grace. Yes. Yes. We've got to come to the throne of grace if we want to get our prayers answered. Mm -hmm. First thing, we've got to come to the presence of God. Secondly, he should humble himself sincerely before God. Don't come with no attitude. Don't come with, with arrogance. He came humbly and fell down at his feet. The, one version says he worshipped him. Amen. Yeah. He recognized him for who he was. Mm -hmm. 
Second thing, okay, he fell down at his feet. Third thing. Third thing, you should lay open his wants and his holy earnestness before God. He besought him that he might heal his daughter. Okay? In other words, when you come to God, just don't say, God, bless me. You come with expectation because you're being specific about what you want him to do. Yes. You're being certain. You're asking him to do a certain thing. You're not just leaving it open. You're being specific. This man came to Jesus. He asked for a specific request mm -hmm. for him to come and lay hands on his daughter yeah. that she would be healed and live. Yeah. Because remember now, she's at the point of death if she has not already died. Yes, yes. All right? And as far as he's concerned, she's about to die. She's about to expire. The fourth thing, he should have unbounded confidence in the power and goodness of God. Uh-oh, why are you coming if you don't? That his request shall be granted. Because he says, I want you to come and lay your hands on her that she would be healed. Now, if he didn't believe that he could do it, why would he even go to him in the first place and ask him to come and lay hands? Amen. Why do we go to God mm -hmm. if we don't believe that he is capable, okay. that he's able, and that he's willing to answer your prayers? Yes, yes. Why are you praying to him in the first place? Mm -hmm. You've got to have confidence. I believe it says in 1 John 5 and 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask what? Anything. Anything according to his will, he hears us. Mm -hmm. And then verse 15 says, and if we know, or better yet, since we know yeah. that he hears us, we know that we have the petitions, mm -hmm. the prayers, the supplications, the requests, that we ask of him. Mm -hmm. We've got to have the confidence yeah. to believe that he is going to answer our prayers. Amen. Amen. Oh, let me take it a step further. We've got to be like Abraham. We've got to be fully persuaded fully. that he's able to accomplish anything he says. We've got to have that blessed assurance mm -hmm. That not only Jesus is ours, but he's going to grant our requests. Because he told us we could use his name. Yeah. He told us we could ask for anything in his name and he would do it. That the Father would be glorified. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have this unbridled confidence. Yeah. That when you go to God in prayer, he is going to answer your request. Because amen, amen. you're praying in line with his will. And that's what this... This, this uh, ruler is doing. This man was doing. He was praying in line with, with God's God. will. Mm -hmm. And he came humbly to Jesus and fell at his feet, realizing who he was. He's a ruler. Yeah. But he fell at the feet of Jesus. That's right. He didn't come with arrogance. He didn't come and say, hey, look, I'm the ruler of the synagogue. And this is what I want. No, 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 no. He fell. He prostrated himself. Every knee. Every knee. Now, whether you get on your knees to pray, because you don't always have to be on your knees. You can be standing up. And you don't always have to close your eyes and have go. But to see, God knows if you come in with a humbled heart. Yes, yes. That's the key. Are you coming with a humbled heart? Because you may not always be able to be on your knees. Listen, you can pray while you're driving your car. You can't get on your knees while you're driving. And you certainly better not close your eyes. Amen. Because you might run into something. But you can pray even while you're driving. You can pray while you're standing up. You can pray while you're working if you work out, if you work standing up. There is no certain way that you have to pray. The Bible just tells us to come humbly mm -hmm. before the throne of grace. That means with a humble heart, realizing who you are approaching. Yes. No. You're approaching God. Amen. And you've got to come humbly before him. All right. Number five. I believe I, no, it was only four. Oh, okay. It was only four points. It was okay. only four points. That's it. Okay. See, you got to understand, they believed in laying hands on people 
Anciently, this is what they did. They laid hands on people because they believed that was through the laying on in hands, heavenly influence were conferred on that person's body as well as their soul. And that's why the Bible tells us to anoint somebody with oil. Lay hands on them and pray for them. Because it's something about that laying hands that the virtue, the power yeah. goes through you and to that person. Mm -hmm. yeah. they, that touch, they, they feel that touch. And it's something about laying hands on them, that touch does yeah. something for them. Yeah. So when, you, when we pray, ministers, I know you know this. When you pray for somebody and you lay hands on them, it's something about touching them that adds to their faith. Amen. Amen. Verse 23, I believe. 24. 24. Yeah, because he said, come and hear my daughter. Verse 24. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. And Jesus went with him, and a great crowd kept following him and pressed him from all sides, so as almost to suffocate him. I want you to pay attention to that. Wow. Let, let me go back and let me read that last part again. That a great multitude followed him and pressed him from all yeah, sides. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was almost like he had to walk like this. Yeah. To the point where it says what? It almost, almost suffocated. suffocated him. Mm -hmm. He so pressed in that he could barely breathe. Mm -hmm. There's so many people around him that's pressing up against him. Now, I want you to pay attention to this because that means that somebody, they're touching him. If they're that close to him that he's almost like this to the point of almost being suffocated, that means there are a lot of people. Now, why did Jesus agree to go to that man's house? Because <laughs> listen, Jesus had the power to heal his daughter from a distance as well as in her presence. He could have just spoke, what did the centurion say? Mm -hmm. Just speak the word. And my servant would be healed. Mm -hmm. He had the power to heal her from a distance as well as in presence. But he went, he goes to the place to teach his ministers, his disciples, a great lesson. What was that lesson? Neither to spare their steps nor the pains when the salvation of a soul is in question. Mm -hmm. don't, don't be too busy that you can't go and lay hands on somebody. Too Those timid. Are too timid. timid yeah. too, too, too afraid. Mm -hmm. uh, are you too busy? I ain't got time to go. No, 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 no. When a, when a question of a soul, the salvation of a soul, you ought to take the time because that's what you're called to do. Yes. As, as ministers, as disciples, as believers, yes. we're called to pray for those who need prayer. Yes. And even lay hands on them if need be. You can't be too busy to do God's work. Amen. Of all things, you ought to make sure you make time to do God's work. Let God's work come first, first. before anything else. And I guarantee you, he'll make time for whatever work you have to do. Yes. yes. You won't lose. Remember, the disciples asked Jesus, we've given up everything. We've given up houses and lands and this and, and, and you know, marriage and everything. Jesus says, you haven't given up anything for the kingdom that you won't get back. Amen. So don't think that you, if you go and sacrifice your time to do help somebody, that you're going to lose. You're not going to lose. Mm -hmm. As my pastor used to say, you don't lose with the stuff you use. With the stuff I use. <laughs> you don't lose. God has not going to let you lose out. So he goes. He's on his way to the ruler's house. But look what happened. And, and I want you to, don't forget this part. The crowd was suffocating him. There were so many people around him. So I'm going to bring that up in a minute. Verse 25. So now, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 long years. And had suffered many things from many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was no better, but rather grew worse. Mm -hmm. Janet, read that 20. 
And there was a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years and who had endured much suffering under the hands of many physicians and had spent all she had and was no better, but instead she grew worse. Now there's a lot of stuff in there and I, I, I kind of skipped over it last week, but I, I want to go back and look at this. It, it said, and there she had an issue of blood. It, you know, ladies, her time, her cycle. Yeah. She was hemorrhaging, okay, for 12 long years. My Lord, my Lord. Goodness gracious. Now, being a health educator, I know that usually it usually lasts anywhere from four to seven days. But for 12 years of constant hemorrhaging. Ladies, ladies. Ooh, ladies. Mm -hmm. I know you don't. You hate it every time that time comes. I know you would have hated it for twelve years. Oh my God! I, you can't even imagine that. But no wonder this woman was in such dire straits. Consider the therapeutics of the Jewish physicians. They didn't know how to treat this woman from this hemorrhaging, and all the medicine they gave her didn't make her any better. It took her money. Took her money, it just made her worse. Mm -hmm. She had spent, the Bible says she had spent all she had. Look how this could have afflicted her. For some of these medications, it's evident that the woman could not be better. No matter what they prescribed to this woman, it did not cure her. It did not make her better. As a matter of fact, for some, it's evident that she even grew worse. Mm -hmm. How, could, how much worse could it be? Was her flow heavier? I mean, it was already bad enough that she had this for 12 long years. And all the medicine that they gave her didn't help her, but just made it worse. And psychologically, too. Oh, say it, say it louder. And also psych, psychologically worse. Mm. What was she going through up here? And from all this together, it indubitably certain that she was suffered many things of these physicians. Mm. No telling what else may have hurt. Janet just got through saying psychologically, it was probably working on her mind that she had spent her money going to all these different physicians. I don't care whether it was 10, 15, 20, she's going to all these, and every one of them is charging her now. Yeah, all her assets. Huh? Now, she's not a rich woman. She's not a woman of influence like she has a lot of money. And even if she did, she's spending all. The Bible says she what? Spent all she had. Mm -hmm. Trying to get cured. Trying to get better. Trying to relieve herself from this hemorrhaging. But she got worse. They didn't know how to treat her. They didn't know how to cure her. They didn't know what to do for her. All this, she was afflicted, all right, and had spent all she had. She is a fit patient for the great physician. Mm. Let me say that again. She is a fit patient for the great physician. All right. All right. Let me tell you this. Man's extremities is just God's opportunity. Yes. See, when you're at the end of your rope, when you just don't know what else to do, when the 11th hour has come and you've done all that you know how to do, now God can step in. Hello. Amen. Now it's his turn to act. Mm -hmm. Man's extremity, when you just don't have any other answers, now is God's opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's time for him to show up. Yes, yes. Never could the power and goodness of God be shown in more difficult and distressful case. And now Jesus comes and she is healed. Yes. Good God Almighty. But look what happened. Let's go to the rest of the story. Because it says here in verse 27. And when she heard. And when she heard. And when she heard. About Jesus. She came behind him in the crowd. And touched his garment. Yes. Yes. And. She had heard the reports concerning Jesus, and she came up behind him in the throng and touched his garment. Wait a minute. Let's deal with that first part. Mm -hmm. And when she heard. Yes. 
Uh, my Bible tells me that faith comes by what? Hearing. It comes by hearing. Mm -hmm. Yes. And hearing by the word of God. Yes. You don't always have to be reading the Bible. It didn't say faith always comes by reading, although it does. But it says faith comes by hearing when she heard the reports. about Je uh, ooh, the reports about Jesus. When she heard the reports concerning Jesus. In other words, she had heard that Jesus had healed other people. Mm -hmm. She had heard that Jesus had healed the lame. She had heard that Jesus had healed the dumb. She had heard that Jesus had healed the blind. She had heard that Jesus had even raised the dead. Yeah. Good yes. God Almighty. When she heard the reports, the reports concerning Jesus, no doubt. she came up behind him. And I got a little ahead of it right here. But she came up behind him in the throng, in the crowd. Remember we, we said that these people were so much around Jesus that they were suffocating him. That means that all these people were bumping up against him mm -hmm. and touching him and, and, and all of that. But she heard mm -hmm. the report. And she touched yes. his garment. Yes. Uh, 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 Luke says she touched the fringe, mm -hmm. the, the borders of his garment. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look what she said, verse 28. For she said to herself, I didn't say that, but I'm adding that. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes. She didn't even say him. Notice that. She didn't even say if I could just touch him or if I could have him touch me. What did the ruler say? I want you to come and lay hands on my dog. Yes, yes. Yes. This woman's not even asking for Jesus to lay hands on her. He's not, she's not asking for Jesus to even say anything to her. Oh, that's why I don't want to skip over this from the last. He, he, she's not saying any of these things. She's saying if I mm -hmm. can just touch her, his clothes. Yes. Yes. My whoa, she believed that his clothes had power. Yeah. Because he was in them. If I could just touch, Luke says just the fringe, the, the, the borders of his garment. What? I shall be made well. Mm -hmm. Now, get this picture. Use your spiritual imagination. All these people are on every side of Jesus, front, back, side, everywhere. And this woman, in her dire weakness now, because she had suffered this for 12 years. She had to be weak. She couldn't have been as strong as somebody who had not had this illness. Mm -hmm. In her weakness, she still had courage. Mm -hmm. And she said, if I could just get close enough so I can imagine this woman in her weakness is elbowing, pushing, trying to crawl through, and at, at the last probably got down on her hands and knees. Because it says she touched the bottom, the fringe. That means she had to get down low. Mm -hmm. she, right. she wasn't up there where she could touch his shoulder or touch any other part. She got down low on her hands and knees at the last bit. Just, just let me just touch the fringe. Mm -hmm. She said this to herself. I shall be made whole. Yeah. They probably knocked her down. They, they may have. Dennis said they probably knocked her down. They may have. Because I imagine she's trying to elbow her way through. And they said, lady, get back. Yeah. Get back. Yeah. You know, they probably elbowing her back and pushing her back. They may have even knocked her down. And in her weakness, she's, she's struggling to get through all of it. Wait. You want to use the number? Let, let's say there are about 500 people there. Is that too many? 200. 100. Whatever. But just say there's a, so many people and she's trying to push her way through and they're pushing her back. Yeah. So now she's got to struggle. She's got to fight, but she was so determined. I'm going to get healed. I don't care what I have to do. I'm going to get to him. I'm going to touch him because I believe he'll make me well. Yeah. 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 Determination. We're talking about great faith. Her faith was so strong, so, so great 
she was not going to let anything or anybody hinder her from getting close enough yeah. just to touch That's the him. hem of his garment, okay. the fringe. He don't have to say anything to me. He don't have to lay hands on me. Just let me touch his garment. Mm -hmm. I don't need to touch him, just his garment. Mm -hmm. And she was whole. Yes. Ah, oh, look what it says in verse 29. Immediately. It says, immediately, instantaneously, right now, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And immediately her flow of blood was dried up at the source. And suddenly she felt her body, in her body, that she was healed of her distressing ailment. And immediately her flow of blood was dried up at the source. Ladies, you know what that means. Huh? At the source. And suddenly, that goes with immediately. She felt in her body that she was healed of her distressing ailment. I'm healed because I believe that if I just touch the fringe, I'm healed. She was healed immediately. It's, God don't have to take no long time to do nothing. Immediately, instantaneously, she was healed. Oh my God, my God, my God. You're talking about a miracle. Mm. 12 young years this woman had suffered from this thing. But she heard about Jesus. Amen. He was in the area. And so she went out to meet him. She went out just so I can get close enough. Mm -hmm. She was, her mind was made up. I don't care how many people was around him. I'm going to get close enough. Whatever I got to do. I remember Zacchaeus. Jesus was walking, there were so many people that Zacchaeus was trying to get to Jesus. He couldn't get to Jesus, so what did he do? He climbed up in a sycamore tree. Mm -hmm. He ran ahead and climbed up in a sycamore tree just so he could get Jesus' attention. And just as Jesus was passing by, he must have yelled and said something because Jesus looked up and saw him. Rabbi, yes. Hey, Jesus, I'm up here. And it had to catch his attention. He looked up and said, hey, what are you doing up there? I'm using my spiritual man. I just wanted to meet you. I just wanted to see you. And Jesus says, you know what? Since you wanted to see me so bad today, I'm going to your house and eat. Ooh. He was determined to get Jesus' attention. This woman was determined to get healed. And she wasn't going to let nothing or nobody hinder her from her healing. I can imagine her determination. Amen. After 12 long years of suffering from this ailment, and was no better after all she had spent. This is her last resort. And she got her answer. But wait a minute, because it don't end right there. Verse 30 says, And Jesus, Immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And Jesus, recognizing in himself that the power proceeding from him had gone forth, turned around immediately in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? He recognized that that's virtue, healing power. Healing power. Yeah had gone out from him. So he turned around, looking to see who had touched his clothes. Uh, listen, I, I know you know. You've probably been in a crowd of people and people have touched your clothes and didn't mean nothing. You didn't, you didn't feel anything. You know, people touch your clothes, but this wasn't a touch, just an ordinary touch. It was a huh? touch of faith. Oh, yes, it was. But wait a minute. <laughs> Look what the disciples say here in verse 31. But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude throning you, and you say, Who touched me? Wait a minute. You see all these people around you to the point where they're almost suffocating you. They're bumping all up against you. They're doing all this, and you have the audacity, Jesus, 
to say who touched you? I, we don't know because it's all kind of people around you touching you. Yeah. But you don't understand. You see, there are many that touch Jesus who are not healed by him. Amen. Why is that? Because they do not touch him with the touch of faith. Amen. Through a sense of their wants and their convictions, they don't touch him by faith. Mm -hmm. Remember when he went to his hometown of Nazareth. The same Jesus mm -hmm. that had healed many. The same Jesus that had fed 5,000. The same Jesus that fed 4,000. The same Jesus that healed all manner of sickness of disease. This same Jesus mm -hmm. could not heal anybody in Nazareth. Simply because of their lack of faith in him. Wow. It wasn't because he didn't have the power. He had the power. It's just that they didn't believe in him. They didn't believe in his willingness and his ability to save them. Faith conveys the virtue of Christ into the soul and the spiritual health of the immediate consequences of this is received through virtue. This woman believed in the ability and power of Jesus and her touching his garment. And he knew this when he was saying, who touched me? This wasn't an ordinary touch. This was a touch of great faith. Yes, yes. A great faith in his ability to heal her. If I could just touch the fringe of his garment. So he was asking, who touched me? Because this wasn't an ordinary touch. Who has touched my clothes? Who didn't even ask me to lay hands on them? Who didn't ask me to speak a word to them? Who just believed that if they could just touch me? Who did it? Ah. Uh, and so verse 32. He looked around to see who had done this thing. Verse 33, but the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole story. Read those two, Janet. It says here, he kept looking around to see her who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had been done for her, though alarmed and frightened and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He's still looking around because I, I got to find this person. I, I want to know who had this great faith mm -hmm. to believe in my power. I'm looking for this person. So now this woman, knowing that she can't escape, although nobody else knew about it but her and Jesus and, Jesus, <laughs> and those physicians who had robbed her, basically. Well, they didn't know. They probably wasn't even there, though. Of course. But Jesus knew, and he said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to find out who it is that touched me. And so now she comes, what does it say? And while she was trembling, she was alarmed and frightened. She fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Mm -hmm. That I heard about you. And I knew what you had done for others. And since I know that you're no respecter of person. Come on. What you have done for others? Surely, surely. Good God Almighty, you'll do the same thing for surely. me. Oh, that's the kind of faith we got to believe. Mm -hmm. we got to believe that God is no respecter of persons. And what he's done for others, he'll do the same thing for you. Amen. If you got enough faith to believe it. And so she came and told Jesus the whole truth. Mm -hmm. I've had this for 12 long years. I spent all I had on all these physicians. They couldn't heal me. I'm only getting worse. But I just believed that if I could just touch the fringe of your garment, yes. I would be made whole. And you know what? It happened. And I'm here to give you all praise, Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm here to worship you, Jesus. I'm here to magnify you, Jesus. I'm here to give you all glory, Jesus. And so Jesus does not disappoint her. Because look what he says. <laughs> he said to her, verse 34, Daughter, your faith has made you well. 
Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Mm -hmm. All these are the words that he would often use. He said, according to your faith, be it unto you. What did he tell the centurion? Go, your faith has healed your servant. According to your faith. I just said what happened in his hometown of Nazareth. They didn't believe in him. He had the power, but they didn't believe. According to your faith, mm -hmm. be it unto you. Be of good cheer, daughter, go. You have been healed. But not only that, what he's telling her, continue to be healed. Because when she touched him, she was healed. So what he's telling her, continue to be healed. You've already been healed. Continue to be healed. Yeah. And don't let this infirmity, this affliction, trouble you no more. See, when God heals you, it ain't no temporary thing. When he heals you, it's permanent. And complete. Oh, and complete. Yes. You ain't got to worry about that one no more. Yeah. It's done. It's over with. It's finished. Mm -hmm. When he healed her, it was complete. Yes. She didn't have to deal with that anymore. Thank you, Lord. She didn't have to spend all her money anymore. Jesus. She could go on and live her life now in peace. He said, go in peace. You ain't got to worry about this problem no more. Nope. See, when we go to God and ask him for something, it is a done deal. Amen. It ain't going to come back no more. Good God Almighty. I don't know if you believe in the power of God to heal, but if you've ever had an infirmity, an affliction, and God healed you, I'm here to tell you that you ain't got to worry about that one no more. No more. It's done. Yes. It's complete. Testify. Yes. Yes. Whew. Good it God, everybody. About to make me start preaching here. Too late. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Told her to go in peace. You have been healed of your infirmity. Mm -hmm. But look here. Because we got to go back to where we started from. Bajaris. Bajaris. Now he's done with the woman. He's still on his way now. He was on his way to his house. While all this is happening, the people are still following now. He's still, he, he, even on his way to Jairus' house, he still has enough time to heal this woman. Yes. Verse 35. While he was still speaking, while he was still talking to the woman, some came from the rulers, from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? While he was still speaking, there came some from the ruler's house who said to Jairus, Jairus, your daughter has died. Why bother and distress the teacher any further? While he was still talking to the woman now, there were those who came from his house, from the ruler's house. If you want to say Jairus or Jairus, whatever, we know that he's the ruler. And he says, your daughter is dead. You don't need to bother Jesus anymore. Mm -hmm. But wait a minute, because here's what happens. Look, and this is the real important part, and I can't leave it off on here. As soon, verse 36, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. Mm, mm, mm. As soon. Yeah. Read that, Jen. Overhearing but ignoring what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be seized with alarm and struck with fear. Only keep believing. Look what he said. Overhearing. Now he heard what he said, but ignoring. Oh, I heard it, but I'm going to ignore that. Huh? I'm not receiving it. And what he said, Jesus said to the ruler, and he said this immediately, do not be seized with alarm or struck with fear. See, how many times have you gotten a bad many, report? Many. Amen. And you start dwelling on that bad report. Yes. I know I have. Oh, the doctor says you might have cancer. Oh, uh oh. What does that mean? Does I mean, I'm going to, uh, uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. It doesn't mean that the doctor may not be right, but the doctor doesn't have the last word. 
Oh, see, you sometimes may get a bad report, but it does not mean it's the last report. Because Jesus, God, has the last word. Amen. So before doubt could set in, before alarm could set in, mm -hmm. before fear could set in, as soon as he heard these, he turned to the ruler and said, whoa, don't believe what you hear. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. Don't believe what you hear. <laughs> you may think it's true, but don't believe what you hear. Just keep on believing. This is why you came to me in the first place. As a matter of fact, you knew your daughter was at the point of death when you came. As a matter of fact, she may have died while you were on your way here. But just keep on believing. Amen. Don't believe the report. You know, we got to say that sometimes to ourselves. No matter how bad the report may be, keep on trusting and believing in God because he has the last word. Stop believing the evil report. Amen. You know, we have a tendency to trust what men say more than what God says. You know, this doctor, he's been to school, he's educated, he's been practicing for 20, 30 years. He ought to know what he's talking about. Yeah, but let me say this. God has been around a lot longer than that man. That man has to pray to God. Oh, that say that again. That man has to pray to God. And God has certainly more power than any doctor. So stop believing the evil report. And if you do receive it, pray, start praying about it right away. And have faith to believe. So Jesus says, don't believe what you hear. Just keep on believing. Don't be struck with fear. Only keep on believing. And you know what? We'll finish the rest of this next week. Amen. Our time is up. Amen. We're going to finish the rest of this with what happens when we go to the house. Because we're going to find out there's going to be some people there that's still not going to believe it. They're going to laugh at Jesus. They're going to ridicule him. They're going to call him a name and all that other stuff. Watch and see. We're going to, you can finish reading and we'll talk about it next week. Amen. <laughs> Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord. Thank Bless you for another Bless night of Bible study. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for... Being able to teach your word. I thank you for giving us the ability to teach your word, to you, declare Jesus. your holy word to your yes. people. Yes. That it would increase their faith, their hope, and their trust in you. That you get the glory from our teaching. The Lord Jesus Christ has lifted up your people, edified, and Satan is horrified. Yes. Yes. We just thank you, Father, for this privilege and opportunity. And we pray right that we have that we have spoken to people that have ears to hear and a heart to receive, that yes. receives your holy word, you, that it increases their faith Thank too, you, Father. Lord. And we pray for all of those who don't know you in the pardon of their sins, mm -hmm. that they will come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus right Christ now, Lord. and receive him in the pardon of their sins Thank before it's everlasting too late. Yes, Lord. And then, Lord, we thank you, Father, for blessing the scientists and the researchers to develop the vaccine that went forth. We pray all those who have not received this vaccine, Lord, we pray that they stop being hesitant, reluctant, and even rebellious and receive this In vaccine because they don't have to die from this thing now. In your name, Jesus. Oh, Lord, just help them stop to be reluctant and receive this. In Open their name. eyes to see the truth of this, Lord, In that it is safe. There is no adverse effects. Lord, we're praying for them right now. But most of all, we're praying for those who don't know you, that yeah. they will come to a saving knowledge so that when they call on you, you will hear them and answer yes. their prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you. We give you all praise, honor, and glory. And Satan, we come in the name of Jesus and we bind your works. Right now. Principalities, no, powers, no, no, no. rulers, and wicked spirits. No, no, no. We plead the blood of Jesus against you. Thank we you. command you to take your hands off of our family members. Take your hands off of our loved ones. Take your hands off of everything that belongs to us. And Father, I'm just asking you, I'm lifting up my nephew, Captain Leo. I'm praying that you change his heart and mind. I'm praying, Heavenly Father, that you turn him around from his way. I'm praying, Heavenly Father, that you can rectify and reconcile he and his fiance in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We believe it, and we call those things that be not as though they were. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God, and amen. Amen. You have the faith. 
God's got the power. Huh. That's a married weather. You heard that? Yes. You got the faith. God's, God's got, the got the power. Yes, yes. No yes. doubt about it. Yes. Everybody have a blessed night and a blessed rest of your week. Be safe. Yes. Remember this. We love you, but God certainly loves you much Amen. more. Amen. Good night.